Hey, I'm Tommy Chong. Welcome to High on Homegrown. Yes, yes, everybody, and welcome to High on Homegrown, the cannabis podcast from PersusGrowRoom.com. In this Grow Guides episode, we're going to be talking about terminology and slang used by cannabis growers. So there's lots of slang and terminology that gets used by cannabis growers. We cover some of it in this episode, but there's always more. If you have any questions or you want us to make anything clear to you, then just head over to PersusGrowRoom.com, start a thread, and we'll be happy to answer any questions you have over there. But, you know, we go off on some tangents in this, as we do, and we cover lots of terminology and slang, as we do. And we also read some slang out of the Ed Rosenthal book, which is called The Cannabis Grower's Handbook by Ed Rosenthal. You can find that up on Amazon, and it's highly recommended. It's a real good book. So check it out if you want to know more about the slang and terminology. Just go to the glossary. But for now, here is the episode. Plenty to learn in this one. I hope you enjoy it, and I'll catch you at the end of this. See you in a bit. So sometimes terminology can get a little bit confusing, especially if you're a new grower, you're going to hear these terms and different phrases that growers will use, which will confuse the fuck out of you. Like, I'm going to top this plant, LST it, put it in a scrog, and then flip it. And people are like, what the fuck did he just say? <laughs> so if you if you hear that kind of phrase often and you're unsure what the fuck it actual, actually means, then this is what we're going to explain throughout this episode. And if anybody out there in the live chat has any phrases that they think we should talk about as well, feel free to drop them in chat and we'll read them out. But where do we even start with this shit? It's, I say this at the start of all of our grow guys because everything like is pretty complex nowadays. But where do we even start with terminology? I mean, one well, of the most important things you'll hear is HPS, right? That's that's a, a phrase that's used often. Yeah, mm -hmm. HPS, uh, HPS, or um, oh. HID. You know that kind of lighting. Yeah. Which are the high intensity discharge lighting, which took a ballast. We usually CMH is the other one I was trying to think. CMH, of. Yeah, yeah, that's another kind of HID lighting as well. Yeah, all those are just basically different kinds of lights, as would be LED. You know, same same mm -hmm. thing. All those acronyms just definitely mean different types of growing lights. Yeah, and back in the day, the HPS used to be the best kind of light you could use, and maybe it is in some situations, but the majority of the time now, the best light you can use to grow anything indoors is an LED light. And that's mm. light emitting diodes that LED stands for. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Since we're in lighting right now, I mean, every now and then you'll hear some old, maybe old school growers talk about T5s. Yeah. You know, t T5s are still used in a lot of veg situations, even in commercial grows. I've been in there and seen nothing but racks of them. It's just four foot fluorescent lights, mm -hmm. T5s. Mm -hmm. T5s, yeah, man. So, uh, I mean, that's when it comes to equipment. We got sh shit like, uh, what was the one with the sucking air out the tent? Uh, Extraction. C CFM or something. Yeah. Cubic feet CFM, per... yep. That's volume. Cubic feet per minute. Yeah. We're asking right. you for how many cubic feet per minute of air is being exchanged in and out of your tent when we're asking you that. I mean, one of the best things you can do is if you go get a nice book from Amazon or there's loads of different places. If you know of the Ed Rosenthal book that came out a few months ago, you can go and buy that from the Oxfordam University then they get a tenor and, you know, it all gets split up nicely. But that's got a real good glossary in the back where it covers a lot of these slang terms as well. So I do yeah. have that book. I have a signed copy of that book, just saying. Well, I'm we saying. also have a, a nice, nice <laughs> dictionary over at Percy's Grow Room. Yeah, it's yeah, absolutely right. free for mm -hmm. you to access mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. on the forum. It'll give you most of these terms. I mean, one, I mean, one thing you constantly, if you've listened to High and Homegrown or if you've read anything online, you'll constantly hear us talk about things like 20 and 4, 18, 6, 24, 0, 12, mm -hmm. 12. And those, all those things, anytime you hear people talking about that relationship to cannabis, it, you're probably talking about light cycles, how many hours of light and how many hours of dark mm -hmm. is all, that, all yeah. that means. So when we say 18, 6, lights on for 18, lights off for 6. Same for any time, two times you're going to be thrown two numbers. That's that's a light cycle, and that's yeah. all that means. Simple. <clears throat> right, so I'm going to like uh, go through this glossary, but I think I'll put out the most important ones. I won't read them all. There's not a lot here anyway. But we have aeroponics. 
This is uh, something that people might not know what the fuck that is. And he says here in Ed Rosenthal's book, uh, aeroponics is a technique of growing in which the roots hang in the air of an enclosed chamber. So it's like a bucket or something, and then it just constantly sprays a nutrient solution at the roots of the plant. So uh -huh. Aeroponics. So uh, alkalinity, I mean, that, that's a bit complex. That's a bit sciencey. You know, know, <laughs> that's just one, one side of the pH scale would be alkalinity. You know, the center would be uh, neutral at seven. And then if you go above seven, you're in the alkaline scale, al your measure of alkalinity. And if you go below seven, you're in the acidic scale, acidity. Mm. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, ballast, that's an interesting one. You know, this is something that powers uh, the HID lighting. Uh, you'll be able to turn it up to 600 watt, 1000 watt. If it's a digital ballast, it's always best to get digital ballast for your HID lights. They're just mm -hmm. a lot more efficient. It'll save money and electric is expensive nowadays. Yeah. And more and more people are getting away from the HID lights. It still is a good light mm -hmm. in a lot of places for use in wintertime when you need extra heat in your tent. But yeah. I'm noticing a lot more people getting away from these things. These, uh, they're, they're expensive to operate. Good man. Mm -hmm. Brax. No, Brax. That's one. B-R-A-C-T-S is how it's spelled. Mm -hmm. uh, the outer leaves that envelope the ovule seed pod Brax mm -hmm. are often misidentified as calyxes because calyxes are pretty similar as well and, and uh, calyx calyx sorry go man. ahead go ahead uh the calyx it says here calyxes are small green sepals that hold the petal at the base of the flower and these can often be confused for male flowers you know if you got pictures if you want to see pictures then it's over at postersgrowing.com you have to find guides there but that's what a calyx is uh, only mm -hmm. a picture can really explain it. It's like um, a teardrop ish, but backwards, you know. <laughs> uh, but you find on the stem, and they can kind of look like male sex parts. But just remember that male sex organs on a cannabis plant, they always have that stalk. They're not directly on the branch, which you'll find with the calyxes. Mm -hmm. And the male parts are, are a lot more rounded. They don't have that teardrop. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. They look more like grapes rather than yep. teardrops. Yeah. Grapes, melons, anything, yeah, rounded. Cannabinoids, that's it. Anybody want to go through the definition of what a cannabinoid is? Because this is something we talk about often, obviously. <clears throat> it's a chemical compound that occurs naturally within the plant. It's the plant, you, generally it's, it's uh, theorized that the plant is producing cannabinoids, cannabinoid, however you want to say it, mm -hmm. um, to protect itself from insects and, and diseases is what it's what it's uh saying and it just so happens that they affect us in a certain way as well and then we like it hmm. but yeah, it's right. a chemical compound and naturally occurring in the resin of, of the cannabis plant yep thc is uh and cbd are both cannabinoids cbg C cbn yes we have one here from rasha in the chat which he said the, the joint spliff blunt debacle and that Ooh. is definitely something which we should explain i mean what my definition might, might differ from person to person it doesn't mean that i'm correct but as far as i understand it is a spliff is uh say you got your paper your rizzler your rolling paper we call it rizzler here in the uk because that's the main brand but you know um you got raws as well you know your papers which you're going to put your cannabis in that uh, for a spliff, you'd put the cannabis and you'd put a, some part of cigarette or rolling tobacco with the cannabis and then you roll it as one and smoke both together. And that's what a spliff is. And if you're rolling a joint, then you'll do the same thing, but you wouldn't put any, any tobacco in it. It would just be all cannabis. And that's what a joint is. So that's the difference between spliff and joint. And when you come to a blunt, a blunt is uh, like a joint. So just cannabis rolled into a tobacco leaf or a cigar leaf which uh, mm -hmm. you'll get from a, cut a cigar open, fill that with cannabis and then roll it back up again. And that's what a blunt is. And most of the time people wouldn't add tobacco to the blunt. It will be pure cannabis with the tobacco leaf, but some people like to try and help the herb burn a little better by adding a little bit of cigarette in there. But that's my definition of those three. You do have something different, Bubble Hawk. How does things work in Australia? What's your terminology for those? Yeah, it's, it doesn't really, I mean, it depends on, I suppose, state um, and, and how you grew up, but usually we don't differentiate from spliff to joint to doobie. It's all, all refers to cannabis cigarette in some form. Right. There's no real, like we wouldn't just call it a joint 
a joint because it had tobacco in it. You know what I mean? It, it's, it mm-hmm. can be a, a green joint. It can be, you know, well, that's probably the better one. You know, we call it either spun or green. Uh, so green being just straight cannabis spun being that we've put some, um, some tobacco in there. Right. But well, usually, yeah, well, that's, that's what we refer it to. What about blunt? Um, a blunt, a blunt, same thing. So blunt is, uh, you know, for us, same thing, cannabis rolled in, uh, tobacco in tobacco leaf, yeah. leaf. Some people will actually add tobacco to that as well. And, you know, if, if you want to go down that route, that's, that's fine, but mm-hmm. be prepared for some serious head spins. So. What about you, monkey? What's the terminology around your way? Exactly what you mentioned. I mean, I've been around Percy so long. It's, it's, that's all I can ever remember, man. All right. Yeah. So it's a, a spliff is tobacco added. Tobacco added to is tobacco added and rolled in a regular paper. Joint is pure, just pure weed, rolled any way you, you choose. And then of course the blunt yeah. is is pure weed rolled in, in a uh, some kind of a tobacco leaf. We also have this shit called a two sheeter or an al sheeter, is where you use two rolling papers together to uh, make, make a, long a bigger one. cannabis cigarette. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Jeffrey. Yeah. You start about, mixing it, everything under the sun. <laughs> Was it from Get Him Get Him to the Greek, I think, is the movie. And he talks about a Jeffrey. And he's like it's got it's it's like Coke and um you know, Coke, speed, cannabis, basically a, a, just a big, big bad mix of whatever yeah. you want. There's a um, <laughs> like weight of weed as well. That's one, you know, because you hear about the Henry, which is 3.5 grams. You know, Henry the yeah. eighth, because it's an Henry eighth the eighth. It, I don't even know if that's a, like an English standard, but I mean, I first heard about it I personally from people from mm-hmm. the UK mm-hmm. by Henry. It's very, I like it. I think it should catch on actually. Yeah, yeah. You know, Henry for the eighth, an ounce of cannabis, just in case anybody doesn't know, is 28 grams as an ounce. Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, you're probably more like you use them kind of weights every day, don't you, in the USA? Is that what you do, monkey? Ounces? Yeah, ounces and shit. Out pounds, ounces. That's yeah, mm-hmm. that's it. Yeah, in the in here. the UK, we're more metric, so we just use a you know. I've most... had to get used to making the conversions automatically because mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. we are an international community, and people over there at Percy's we post both ways, and but sometimes people post both ways too. You never know. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you have an ounce of cannabis and then you have half an ounce, which is 14 grams, a quarter of an ounce, which is seven, and then an eighth of an ounce, which is 3.5, also known as the Henry. And then you can, you know, when you were back in the day and you used to have a spare fiver, you're only 16 years old, managed to get some money from your ma and you could buy a tenth for, you know, 10 pound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, we... 1.7. We, we go the metric, but it's, it, it's funny because we'll, you know, every, when it's, it's all weighed out, weighed out in grams but like not not in um not in ounces or whatever but we'll still ask for it as oh, mm-hmm. can i get a half you know but you you know that it's or a fitty yeah so a fitty is an eighth um or a twofer which is two grams for 40 and then uh a stick which would be a 20 um so that's usually a gram to 1.2 grams depending on how happy your dealer is and how much he likes you um but yeah, once you get once you get above a fifty, then it starts going into um, into yeah quarters, halves, ounces, and up from there. Mm-hmm. How else do we have here? I mean, this thing. Uh, sorry, monkey, were you going to say something? No, I said most of the stuff I was going to say around here in the states. Most of the time, if I'm going to buy in legacy market, it's by the ounce. You know, it's like you said, the eighth or, or anything like that. But nowadays, I'm starting to see. I don't, I, I don't buy on the illicit market, but I have seen people on on markets now selling by the gram nowadays. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm starting to be, because dispensaries in legal states and even even the medical market is selling uh, in grams here in the states. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I made a typo there in the chat. It says, what is LST, HPS, LED, the flip, PPFS? You know, so what? (laughs) That's not how it's spelled, bro. (laughs) Well, we always talk about these. Right, PPFD. We are are constantly using the word colas. Now, we're not talking about Mm, something to mm. drink, are we? Yeah, that's a good one. Colas are your main (laughs) female flowers on a cannabis plant. The biggest, longest main flowers. That's your Mm, colas. Your buds. That's that's good shit. That's the good shit. The colas. That's what everybody wants to have. Nice, big, firm, long colas. We have LST as well, which we've explained on one of the previous episodes, which is a low stress training where you're going to type 
certain parts of the plants down to make the shape change make sure it's yeah. growing more horizontally than upwards well, stimulating different parts of the plant with light by, by tying it sideways up upside down any way you have to to kind of mm-hmm. get those buds into the light and cause them to you know hormonally change in ways that makes them grow mm-hmm. so what about dwc that's another growth style we talk about a lot uh yeah that's right man uh, deep water culture pretty much that stands for and that's where you grow in cannabis in pretty in buckets or big tubs of water with air no soil in involved that's right no soil at all no soil, no cocoa, just water and bubbles. Mm-hmm. That's right. And plants love it, man. They they love it. It's they a do. very quick way to grow. Is uh, the plants grow quickly, healthily. You control exactly what they're being fed. It's a good way to grow. We should do an episode on DWC and different hydroponic methods in specifics, I think. Definitely would have to bring in an expert for that one because I know very little about that. Now here's one we have called the chemotype, which refers to the chemical profile of a cannabis cultivar. That's another one, cultivar including cannabinoids, terpenes, and flavonoids. Cultivar is pretty much the strain of cannabis. You know, it's just a different word that uh, people are using. I know there's, there'll be arguments about that, and it differs in more ways than just that. But pretty much, basically, cultivar is the strain, like White Widow is a cultivar of cannabis and, and shit like that. It's just a nice way to say strain, in my opinion. Of course, it, it's not as simple as that, but yeah. we like to keep things simple. You saying bubble hawk, sorry? No, cultivar. I was just agreeing with you. That's mm-hmm. usually it just refers to the strain. Mm-hmm. But uh, well, chemotype is, uh, well, like I said, they refers to a chemical profile of the cannabis. So that's more like the association between the terpenes and the cannabinoids of a certain cultivar, right? Yes. No? no? Yes, no. <laughs> what do we think? Yes. No, that, that's correct, right? That's pretty much summed that up. Yeah. It's just these uh, confusing words that are used sometimes, like fertigation as well, uh, is the application of fertilizers to plant mix using an irrigation system. So fertigation. You might hear that often, high-frequency fertigation, which is pretty much feeding the plant more often, giving it, the, like if it's in cocoa or some kind of soilless medium, then uh, high-frequency fertigation is feeding it once every 15 minutes with a certain amount of runoff. Well, it could be even feeding it twice a day would be mm-hmm. considered mm-hmm. high frequency fertigation you know, if you're yeah. increasing it from one to two. Yeah. You know, but you, you know, like in cocoa, you can, I have gone as high as 10 a day just to see what would happen. Oof. You know, micros, mm-hmm. waste, mm-hmm. waste to feed, you know, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll you know, end of the story there. Don't do it. But, it's important when you're doing the micro grows to have the high frequency fertigation because yeah, it's the small the pot the size, form. you mm-hmm. definitely need to do it then. Yeah, for sure. And then we have fan leaves nice simple one you know yeah. when you, when you got these big leaves coming off the main stems of the plants and you see that they're not attached to anything but the stem then they are your fan leaves and they're going to collect the most amount of light but you also have the tip leaf which is also known as sugar leaf and uh-huh. that's the closer to the buds it's going to grow out of the buds when it have a little bit of a frost on it and the frost which we mean is thc the crystals the cannabinoids you know, the cbd trichomes the trichomes the resins you know that, that what that shit is that's the frost, and that will be Good on sticky the stuff, the stuff you want. Uh, and you trim that shit off. You know that's yeah. what you'd be trimming off the plant is all that stuff. Now we talk about plus. and growing frequently in grow guides. We talk about EC, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. electrical conductivity, and what we're asking right there is what's in the water. Basically, is we're asking what's the measure of the EC that's going to let us know what the salt content is in that water when you measure it with a with a device. So. It's just mm-hmm. the measure of the electrical conductivity or purity of your water. And we'll yes. talk about uh, sometimes salt-based nutrients and organics. Mm-hmm, and, you know, the, the terminology there is the salt-based nutrients is the stuff where uh, salts are pretty much dissolved into water and you're going to feed that to your plant when organic stuff is made by uh, natural processes like worm farm or something like that. You know, broken down compost, some manure, rather than something that's made in a factory. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the organics, the term organics itself is a bit controversial and a lot goes into, you know, what actually does organic mean? Because I think one of the rules in the EU is if a plant is grown indoors under lights, regardless of the medium it is, then it's still classed as inorganic. It's not organic weed. You know, well, yeah, I mean, not- there's some some strange things in that because mm-hmm. like 
uh, let's go ahead and use sulfur. Sulfur can be is mined straight from the earth. It doesn't have to be processed and can be used in, in soil to change the pH or even as a, a nutrient for your plants. But some people won't consider it organic because it, it's not uh, a carbon molecule based material. It's mined from the ground, but it technically would be an organic input because it came from the earth without being altered. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's a gray area. When we start talking about organic versus salt, it, it, organic is right there on, on the edge of a lot. There's a lot of controversy on that, on that term. Mm. We also have I the think, flip. The flip is a common term which was used pretty much, uh, pretty often. And this is when you're growing photoperiod plants and you change the lights from 18.6, keeping the plant in the vegetative stage, and you change it to 12.12 where the plant begins to flower. All right, uh -huh. so that, that's what the flip is. If anybody doesn't understand Flipping that. It. The flip, that's right. I call it the flippening. Yep, and I mean, you'll hear it quite a bit. Everybody always says it, every grower, I just flipped my, my, my tent or I flipped my grow. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. that, no explanation needed, that's what we did. We changed it over to flowers. B Mooney in the mm -hmm. chat there said, Epsom salt is organic. You see, it is. that's what I mean. It is, but it's salt too. <laughs> I was gonna use that, I was gonna use that as an example, but that was like some people will argue that point because Epsom salt could also be made in a factory but mm -hmm. it is organic too. You can get it organic. It's most commonly organic, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it's crazy stuff, man. Like I said, it's just, uh, I just want to get along. I don't want to fight, you know? So um, a lot of, I'm mean, just reading some stuff in that chat about uh, doing the 24 to 48 hours darkness or changing your light schedule back in flower. Uh, by all means, give it a crack. If you, if you've got a, a crop that you're not being reliant on, but mm -hmm. I would, I'd be extremely careful doing that. Uh, you're going to either push, you know, if, if you push it too long, you'll either push that plant back and re-veg it, or mm -hmm. it's going to go into, it's going to freak out and you're going to herm it. So just, I mean, but again, experiment by all means, that's, that's what this whole hobby is about. But at the same time, just be careful because we do know that those are issues that can crop up. Um, as far as the 48 hours, 24, 48 hours of darkness goes, there, there's debate around that. It's to, from, from all the research that I've read, it seems to be more a bro science thing than anything else. The same as drilling holes in the plant stem and putting ice mm -hmm. on the thing and all that. I mean, they, you know, they, they may, if it works for you and you think it makes a difference and that then, then go nuts. Um, but all the research I have read has shown that that's not the case similar to sort of flushing um that's another another hotly debated one as far as that goes mm -hmm. when you know if you're going to flush at the end personally i do flush but considering at the end. this is about terminology and slang what is flushing oh wow. good point that's, <laughs> that's a good point. there that's a good point. yeah so <laughs> I, I mean flush so flushing just refers to uh essentially flushing the medium whatever medium that may be hold on well, what me what does water. medium mean Oh, Jesus. Well, let's, let, well, no, let's finish flush first, okay? <laughs> um, so, well, we'll go back to flushing first before we get on to medium, um, but I can try and cover both at the same time. So medium referring to the whatever you're growing in. So whether that be uh, your DWC buckets, cocoa, um, soil. or growing in soils and, and organics wool. and, and you know, whatever you're using. Yep. Yeah. So that's what we were, that's what we're talking about when we're talking about mediums and flushing just refers to not feeding that. So essentially putting more clean, fresh water through with no feed in it to flush out and draw out any excess salts, any excess, um, feed okay, that's I mean, in there. Anything that's in there. Yeah. To, to, reset. Yeah, and the and the i the idea behind it is to reset that medium and to also let the plant if we're talking end flush is to let that plant then use the resources it has on hand to finish the grow uh, that's why i use flushing you know, or if i've got a lockout in cocoa i'll flush um, and go from there so it's there's a couple different ways um, yes we flush the other way billy that's that's what we do it just gets it's not that we do it on purpose. It's not like we get in there with a big <laughs> stick and turn it around. It just, it's, it's the just Coriolis the effect. Runs. Yeah, Are you sure about just... that? I was always thought there was a paddle up there in, in the loo up there, you know, it's just, it's actually yeah. a myth, man. You need to read uh, bad astronomy by Phil Plate. <laughs> when you, <laughs> when, yeah, when you go down to Kmart, you get a toilet brush and a paddle. That's exactly. 
Yeah. It won't flush unless you paddle this direction. That's I've got cool. one here, which we uh, <laughs> which we use pretty pretty often. I think uh, the, the word phenotype. Yeah, yeah we actually yeah. do. Which uh, let me see here in the Ed Rosenthal book. It says refers to the physical traits like plant height, yield, leaf size, terpene profile, cannabinoid ratios, flavonoid content, time to harvest, and so forth. So that's what a phenotype is. You just pretty much. It's, it's like strain, but every time you have a strain of cannabis, every seed that comes from it, it's going to differ slightly from yeah, let's, the, let's another talk about seed. Family is an easy way to look at this one, huh? Okay. It's like, yeah. okay, all of my siblings came from this, and myself came from the same parent, but we're not the same. Mm -hmm. We are very similar. We have similar traits, similar interests. So we might look similar, but we're not exactly the same. And the same, same thing with cannabis seeds. Uh, every seed in there is going to have some slight deviation in it, but they're all basically had the same genetic input, mm -hmm. but slight so, genetic so say you have a, output. You have four white widow seeds, you plant mm -hmm. them all, there's still got those four phenotypes, but they're all the same strain. It's like the next step down from strain, right? Yeah, it is pretty much. And, and generally the, uh, the types, the, the, Cannabis that has lines that have been carefully worked by breeders, the phenotypes will have less variation and such things as that. So, you know, better we, lines, better plants. Then we have these crazy ones, man, when it gets all scientific and shit, and this gets a bit complex, where we have a PPF, which stands for photosynthetic photon flux, is the total number of photons, that's a U moles, micromoles, produced by the light source. So, uh, what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and we kind of talk a little bit about that when we, we, uh, we don't talk directly, we don't use on the show at least that specific thing, but we do speak about things like PAR, which is mm -hmm. a measure of, of what you're talking about there. Which stands uh, for photosynthetically active radiation. Refers right, to we want to know how much range. light how much light the plant can use is available is what yeah. we're asking you yeah. by par so which is between 400 and 700 nanometers and as i said it's complex shit man it's not massively important to know i mean when you've learned everything else and you need to learn some extra stuff on top this is the stuff you're gonna start learning what par is and things like that you know it's it's yeah, all you don't have, very complex yeah, you, you don't have to know all this stuff right up front mm -hmm. i mean mm -hmm. you can join a forum like percy's which is what i did and then at, you'll start hearing these things I don't. And you'll you'll figure I, your stuff out pretty fast. And I don't measure any of this par or PPFD or anything. I like do. That. <laughs> you don't, yeah. Some people do. Some people don't. But that's mm -hmm, just it. Mm -hmm. You know, it, you don't have to. That's if, right. if you if you figured a way to do it without measuring, more power to you. What what else do we have here? No uh, PPFS, which is not PPFS. That's just a typo on the screen. But PPFD. Does mm -hmm. anybody know what that stands for? Photosynthetic photon flux density is a measurement that a measurement that most accurately describes light received by plants since it weighs all photons of light in the PAR spectrum equally, unlike lux. What and lux is a metric measurement of light. It's like what? What? Yeah. <laughs> when you start getting into lighting and, and growing mm -hmm. plants, mm -hmm. you have to pretty much forget about what we see as humans. I mean, and that's mm -hmm. pretty much what Mackie's alluding to there. You know, a lot of times light meters you buy, light meters you may have an app on your phone, they measure lux. That doesn't, you know, in lux, I, you can stick your, your, your lux meter in green light and it's going to measure like, measure like crazy. It can be bright as heck. You can stick a PAR meter in there and, and it's not going to see a lot of usable light in that green spectrum because it's not in that right uh, range that we need, you know, mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. that kind of a thing in there. So LUX is a term that we use for visible light to the human eye and PAR is more like visible light to your plants. So lumens are for humans. <laughs> there you that's go. That's, saying, that's, that's, you know? that's a good way to, yeah. 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 So when you go to a forum and ask, you know, I've got this many lumens on my plant, that's not telling us very much of anything. See, what I like to say, though, is if you're going to buy a good light from a reputable company like HLG, of course, they're a sponsor of Percy's and we'd recommend those guys. If you're getting lights from those guys on micro, then the research has already been done and it's going to be given off the right, around, right amount of PPFD and PAR and all this shit your plant needs. It's not, you don't really need to measure it when it's already been done for you. In my opinion, it's just, it's more stress for you. Right. Just keep it simple. Keep it simple. You got a good light. Let the light do its work. 
That, that's mm-hmm. how I look at things. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm a big believer of it. They're just talking about in in chat there about without the meters, you know, we you were stuck reading the plants. I'm a big believer of of reading the plants as well. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Pardon me, learning how to read a plant is more than just beneficial when it comes to light. Um, you know, you, you can, if you can read a plant, you can spot signs of stress coming on well before they're going to have any, any major effect and you can correct it um, depending on, again, what medium you're in, uh, but you can correct it fairly quickly. So it's, it is good to learn how to read a plant uh, mm-hmm. if you can. And the only way you're going to learn to do that is to grow. And the more you grow and the more often you do it and the more you learn and the more you watch those plants, the easier that becomes and you start to see signs of different things cropping up and um, and you then know what you're doing and able to um, to correct the issue, I suppose, as you go from there. But yes, reading plants, I am a big, big fan, big, big fan. We have another one here, which is, uh, I think we bring this up sometimes, but I know many other YouTube channels and podcasts also use this word a lot. Rhizosphere. Yes. So then that's, I mean, it sounds complex word, but it's, it's really not a complex word. It, it it is. Let me just tell you what book this is. This is the Cannabis Grower's Handbook by Ed Rosenthal. Uh-huh. Is this his new one? Yeah, this newest one. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, the rhizosphere is the area of soil immediately surrounding the plant's roots, which contains many organisms living in the community. So pretty much it's the root zone, you know, it's, it's not necessarily the roots. Yeah. It's the root zone. It's what's living around your roots. Uh-huh. Every, that, whatever's in your pot, that's your rhizosphere, guys. Mm-hmm. Pretty much, man. Just to keep it simple. Yeah, and pretty simple. If you have a good rhizosphere and there's plenty of bacteria and different foods working together, then your plant's going to be very happy. You know, you take care of the rhizosphere and the rhizosphere will take care of your plants. So look after the soil. It's very important. Or the cocoa or, you know, the, the water, whatever you're using. Keep that in good condition and the plants will be happy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ruderalis. This is another one which pops up sometimes, you know, because most people know the sativa and indica form of cannabis. But when you come to ruderalis, ruderalis is pretty much the auto genetics of the plant. And that comes from an an offshoot of a strain of cannabis, a type of cannabis called the ruderalis, obviously, which is from uh, Serbia and up in northern Russia, these cold climates. And they're... uh, they're more hardy than the sativa and indica plants are, and they flower under their own life cycle, own light cycle, rather than having to go to twelve twelve. Uh, I don't, don't know if you know this. I don't know if you know this, Mackie, but I'm a little, uh, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a fan when it comes to autos. I do like my autos. Autos are good, really? man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 you know, not everybody knows this, but it is a thing. <laughs> well, there's lots of people out there who hate autos, mate. I know. Like, I know. You, <laughs> Your autos nowadays are high quality shit, man. And if that's the best way for you to go and do it, you know, autos quality, man. I, I, I never get any problems with the autos. Yeah, just, yeah it's um, whatever you're into. You just got to know how to handle yeah, it. Yeah. You're in. You if know? you want a quick yeah. grow, just blap, 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 done. Then get some fucking autos done. But if you want to take your time, do some scrogging, do some LST, and you know, actually put some work into the grow, then get the photo periods, man, because that's the shit too. Is to try and figure out what's best for you, autos or photos. And, you know, autos yeah. or photos, quickly we'll explain. Them ones is uh, photo period plants will only flower when they get to 12-12, when auto flowering plants will flower under any light cycle. They more have a, like a, a life cycle of 12 weeks. Right? Mm-hmm. Well, yes. Pretty close. Yeah. yeah. Now, while we're in there about those type of things, let's talk about regular seeds, you know, because you'll mm-hmm. hear us talk sometimes mm-hmm. about regs or regular seeds. It doesn't just mean, oh, they're not fancy. Regular seeds means it has both male and female seeds in there. As so nature means, intended, just regular. Yes, it does. Just the way it came, came from the wild, regular seeds. So if you got regular seeds, you have to be able to identify males and females so that you, you can uh, you know, get what you need there. Mm. And then while we're on regular seeds, you'll also hear feminized seeds. And, you know, feminized seeds are generally going to be easier for your home grower to handle because feminized seeds have not ever had a male involved anywhere in their production. So it's used only female. Uh, it's done by reversing a female to make female pollen so that everything produced or 99.99% of the seeds produced will be female on a feminized seed. And we have an episode on that too. Let's you know, go yes. back and look at seeds and we'll tell you all about that. And just FYI, because if people get confused about this, autoflowers have both regular and feminized too. Yes. John Finnegan asked, uh, 
John Finnegan asks, do you need a GIMP mask to perform LST? It's completely up to you, John. I prefer it. It might not be your thing, but you know, just try it out, man. See if it works for you. That's what you have. If to you do. ever it want to have anything as impressive as as the montage, you better have the gimp mask going, man. It depends. It really depends on how good your gimp mask is. If mm -hmm. you if you mm -hmm. bought it from Mackie, and, uh, <laughs> if it's extra gimpy, it, high quality, it just, it, it'll, be, it'll, be a, it'll be it'll be a high quality extra plastic gimpy. bag. Extra gimpy. <laughs> Burn. <laughs> I'm still, I'm, I'm still upset. Monkey's head was all bedazzled and had jewels on it, and mine was just a plastic bag with a Percy sticker on it. I'm, I'm real, I'm just you, upset. Man. That's all it is. <laughs> still sore about that, bro. <laughs> still sore. Still upset. Uh, savages, savages. Yeah, thanks for that, John. You saw him mature, bro. Fuck's sake. Yeah, that's right. Billy says they're jumping. It's just Mackie's special thing. That's right. It's special. Right. <laughs> So the special times when I get the gimp mask on with a snooker ball in the garb and do a podcast like, oh. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, uh. fucking piss takers, stop it now. I'm trying to concentrate here and be professional. God damn. Gonna have to edit all that out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I need to admit it, make the noise, I didn't have to edit it. So, here you go. <laughs> Uh, well, <laughs> hold on. What else do we have then? I mean, there's plenty of fucking different words. Is Gimp a Brit thing or we're just lucky? Don't deny it, Art Man. Like you don't <laughs> know what Gimp is, bro. <laughs> have you not seen Pulp Fiction? Come on. Oh. Come on, watch Pulp Fiction, man. You know what a Gimp is. Uh, anyway, let, we'll try to concentrate here, everybody. Come on, have yourselves. So immature, everybody. <laughs> My God. Uh, <laughs> so I'm running on fumes, bro. <laughs> <laughs> don't blame me for this. If it goes sideways, I warned you at the beginning. Uh, <laughs> Rude variety, serotonin, uh, sensimila. That's a, that's an interesting one. Sensimila is a uh, pretty much uh, an old term, pretty much there. Seedless yeah. weed. Yes, right? and we're all you know, like the internet thing, man. We're all very privileged nowadays. We don't come across seedy weed very often. But it used to be a standard thing back in the day. Now, yeah, back in the day, when I used to get hold of some with the old school sense of me in back in the day, mm -hmm. you still, now it was, it was a, a treat to get the buds were nice, well, let's say nice-ish, better than the other, the other non-sense buds were, but you would still find, it wasn't uncommon maybe in a, in a bag to find five seeds because you know back then they didn't have feminized seeds and the only way they made mm -hmm. this is they had actually to watch for males and had to try and pull them before they they, uh, had, they had any pollen get loose on them so it was a lot more labor intensive but yeah back in the day just because it was sense didn't mean zero seeds it meant very very few seeds no quick shout out there to that guy who discovered feminized seeds fair play bro that, that was changed the world yeah. bro <laughs> well yeah i mean especially uh, figuring out how to make them the easy way not not having to go through all of the end of life herm and stuff like that you know uh stomata it, that's a general uh plant biology term which is pretty much the pores on the leaves yeah, uh, on the underside uh, of the leaves there's a pore called and it lets oxygen in and out of the plant and stuff yeah moisture oxygen now we talk about terpenes a lot as well and terpenes it to make it really simple because it is way more complex than just this but the terpenes is the smell and the flavor coming from the buds pretty much and they all have different medicinal properties they'll do different things uh, when they work together in different ways it's a very complex subject but uh, we're pretty much on the basic level it's just the smell and the taste of your cannabis is the terpenes pretty much Going, going back to the CD weed, did anybody else used to play um, uh, Doobie Roulette? No. Oh, well, you put no. one seed in and you keep passing <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it sounds like a fun game. think about it there going like, yeah. yeah. But you know what it usually was, was the guy who rolled did it and didn't tell anybody. Yeah, yeah, so that was yeah. the way, you, and then Damn. you pass it around. Or like, so we used to do it where you'd put one, one about you know three or four hits in and then one right at the end. So we have a nice little firecracker at the end. So when it blows, everybody has a laugh. And then the last person doesn't expect he's going to cop it. And then pop, That's he right. cops he's, one as well. He's sucking on the roach, getting that last little hit and kapow, right? In his little mouth. Yep. Yep. Was super, oh, crop really. asked, uh, uh, super Crop asked, Super asked, what is a Bogart? That's an American term, as far as I know. Um, 
And it pretty much means you're holding on to the, the to spliff the joint, the blunt, you know, whatever. You're holding on for it for too long. You need to pass that shit. Mm-hmm. Stop, stop holding and talking. Either hit it or pass it. Yeah. That's what it was when I, where, you know, in my, in my crew, at least. Right. right okay, Remember two drag yeah. pass, you know, where you take two draws and then you have to pass it on to the next person. You go around in the circle. Remember before COVID remember, remember. <laughs> we just, we just, we just called them joint hogs or pricks. Either of the two. Yeah. There's only in the circle that one time. Yeah. Hit it, pass it. You know, it's, it's not yours. Oh, the one that got me is the ones, the ones that hit it like a vacuum cleaner. And say so like, <laughs> well, those the are the guys. Who, yeah, and those are the people that never had their own weed. Yeah, and they're like, oh, can I, can I hit that? And then it's like, yeah, you know, you can have a hit, thinking all's good. And the next minute, you got to run, and three quarters of it's gone. You know, yeah, great, thanks, man. Uh, and and then and it's always they're always the ones that wet the butt too. That's it. Oh, you get, you get it back, and it's a slow. Yeah, it's like you duck ass. We call that here in the UK. You duck ass it. <laughs> duck ass it. Yeah. Don't cast the split, bro. You know, this is why you roll your own and you know, make sure your friend make sure you roll enough for your friends to just take one as well. Be like, there you go, don't touch my shit. But <laughs> you know, if you're not growing your own, cannabis is expensive, and no matter where you are, and it's like mm-hmm. a whole round of drinks and shit. Yeah, yeah every time I trim, I think about it. Look at I look at what I put in the in the cupboard, and I just you know, <laughs> hey, that's worth ten dollars a gram. My God, Billy Bonds that. put fucking bomb socked at the spliff is what it's called around his way. <laughs> and that's, so you get that's the thing with the UK. We have different words for the same shit all over the country. Ten minutes down the road, will completely speak completely different to how everybody else speaks. It's ridiculous. So bomb yeah. socked the spliff, duck ass the spliff. You know, it's a uh, same kind of thing. Very much the same down here, except it's more convictish. We're extremely lazy right. with our English yeah. down here. There's a lot of slang involved. <laughs> like, is there any more in chat? You know, has anybody else got any in chat which you'd be like, oh, you forgot about this one? I mean, there, no, there's loads we haven't spoke about because there's a lot of different uh, bum yeah, puffing. I mean, yeah, that's what. About. So bum, bum puffing refers to just taking a draw on it but not inhaling. Oh, here's a good one. Hit that shit. We don't actually mean hit it. <laughs> like with yeah. your hand, he's slapping that shit, you know, <laughs> like Tony Montana. <laughs> <laughs> it, that's not what we're talking about. I mean, just uh, smoke it or, you know, consume Take it. Take a hit. Yeah. Hit that shit. Do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a grinder. Enjoy. We obviously mean uh, where you put your buds into a device where you twist it up and it crushes the weed into Please. smaller sections for you. Sometimes it's called a crusher, not just a grinder. It's a crusher too. Uh, it's true. What's Rasha saying there? Stick your fingers. Oh, yes. Stick your fingers, man. Selfishly appropriate or keep. So, Rush, well, are you high? <laughs> well, we, I guess that's one word right there. So, like Keef. Keef, yeah. Talk, like Keef. Mm, what is mm. what, you'll hear people talking Keef. Keef were referring to the trichomes that fell off when you were processing your bud. It usually falls into the bottom of a tray, maybe in, through the screen in your grinder. I mean, it's pretty much dry sift, right? It's dry mm. sift, yeah. yeah. It's Keef. You just uh, save up the dry sift of it. You get the buds and you, uh, the THC crystals will fall off them and get mm-hmm. stored up somewhere. That's going to be a key for you, your dry sift. Yeah, and you I can think... take that. It can be cleaned and pressed into hash, or you can actually put it into your joints or you know, put drop it into a bowl or whatever. Sh- Showing off had a good one here. A shotgun, reversing blunt or joints in your mouth, then blowing someone a hit. Mm-hmm. Remember that one? We call- What was that called? Oh, okay. What's it? Uh, yeah, it's called a blowback we, here in the UK. Blowback. Yeah, I remember doing that. It was a pain in the butt to do it because yeah, if you didn't do it right, you ended up with ashes all in your mouth and stuff. Mm-hmm. So there was this device, experience. and I think <laughs> Art Man posted it over at Percy's. It sort of looks like a condiment ketchup bottle, but on you would put the spliff on the inside in a, in a holder. And it was a yeah. hole or a carburation hole in, in the side of the bottle. So after you put the lit joint in there, when you squeezed it, it would basically shoot out a stream. It would blow a shotgun out of the out of the, out of the bottle, basically. And it made it a whole lot easier than sitting there trying to blow one back. But my God, you'd get stoned on that damn thing. We have one here, which we'll quickly cover. And you can go back to the um, the extracts episode that we did. And it will answer most of these questions. But can you guys, from Stonewolf, can you guys explain the difference between Keef, Hash, Rosin, and RSO? I think he's trying to say there. 
But anybody want to take that? Monkey, you want to take that away? Ooh, rough. Well, Keith, like we said, Keith is generally who was referring to the dry sift cash that's fall, or the, the trichomes that's fallen off of your, of your bud, your sugar leaf, wherever. Uh, a lot of time you'll find it, like we're saying, scraping, scraping it out of a tray or uh, at bottom of your grinder. Some people actually do dry sift just to get, get the keef out of it. But it, it's basically the amberish looking sticky uh, little powder that comes out. Then hash would be something that you're going to intentionally make. Uh, uh, bubble hash, good example. You're going to take your bud and you're going to use water to extract all the trichomes off, wash them off. And then in the end, you're going to take that and it's going to be compressed into a ball or a puck or something like that. But it's again, it's a preparation of mostly trichomes that's been used, but it's, it's extracted using a different type of a, usually a solvent type extraction. It mm -hmm. would be a dry ice or a water or something like that, like extraction like that. And the rosin, that's a different situation. Rosin, you're going to take your bud or even, even you can take hash or keef. And you're going to use heat and pressure and you're going to push the oil and, and the rosin out of the plant away from the plant material it's going to be a purer form of concentrate than the hash is going to be uh i don't I've, I've i've consumed rosin i've never made it that kind of thing and so i've seen it made, like but one of those things. solvent solventless extracts basically mm -hmm. yeah. you just now, squish it and get the good shower right. squish it with some heat now, there are yeah. some rosins that are solvent extract that can be done out there, but the most commonly yeah. nowadays you're seeing is the solventless extracts for the hot thing out there. Mm. And that would the solventless rosin is just a heat pressure thing. On on the keef versus hash thing, <clears throat> whereas hash is, is trichomes, you know, you're knocking all the trichomes off and doing it that way. I find keef, or we refer to keef as having, it because it's got, it's keef because it, it'll have a little bit of plant matter in there. Mm -hmm. Whereas generally, if you're making hash, it's just the trichomes mm -hmm. um, you go. that, that you're going for. So that's nice. the difference that I see in it. Yeah. I'm not an expert on concentrates. I enjoy them. Uh, mm. I, I do make some hash, but beyond that, I don't do much more. We have this one from, uh, I should see here in the chat, from 480 Homegrown said, a bit off topic, but I wanted to say thank you for the prizes sent to me. Received my monkey pipes, coffee cup and decals. Fucking rad. Thank you. Nice one, homegrown. Great you appreciate it. Sounds like the, the wake and bake Very kit, cool. Huh? The wake and bake It kit. is. The that, that does sound like the wake Coffee and bake cup. kit. Very cool, bro. Enjoy. Like well it. deserved. Congrats, man. Nice deal. Good deal. And Artman said, I would burn a joint fast. And um, it reminded me of something we call the sideburn here in the UK, which is where, obviously, judging by the name, you've already joined, burns sideways. You know, like half of it isn't burning and half of it at the top is because you haven't rubbed the joint properly. No, yeah, he's but, talking about that. That uh, I think he's referring to that plastic bottle thing I was referring to. That joint burns a joint fast. Oh yeah, maybe I'm just uh, asking. Yeah. What do you guys call like when you split burns a run. down the side? A run. You call it a run. A run. Yeah, that's what we call it. Yeah, the joints run. running. Yeah, back in the day, the weed that we used to get. My home, my homegrown doesn't run too much. Maybe I'm just mm -hmm. doing a good job of it. But that old cheap street weed. My God, yeah. some of that stuff, you couldn't stop it from running. I don't care how good you rolled. Yeah, well, mm. I remember one time smoking a fat joint, and I'm a good roller. You know, I can roll a good split. You don't sideburn often. But when I went to Brighton Beach, and I was there smoking a joint on Brighton Beach, man, it just this thing was like halfway smoked <laughs> just the left-hand <laughs> side of the split. It was absolutely <laughs> ridiculous, man. So, yeah. It's always American embarrassing knowing. when it happens when you rolled it too. It's like, what did mm -hmm. I do wrong? It's you just know? far too windy. There's nothing you can really do about it, you know? Mm -hmm. Just take yeah. two so you get to smoke two off. It's all good. Yeah. Like trying to smoke a, a, a joint on a windy beach at night, you know? My God, you get mm -hmm. it, everybody, mm -hmm. if you two people there and you each get two hits and the whole damn thing's gone. You know? But well, half of it has. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what the hell? The wind just eats that shit up. Man. Side burning is yeah. busted. Well, we should fucking uh, do a quick one there from the American one. He said he calls it canoeing. It's canoeing in his place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and that's yeah, it. I've heard These that too. Terminology can change depending on where you are around the world, man. And uh, if you have any questions, or you, if if we ever say a particular term on the podcast, you don't know what the fuck we mean. Ask on Percy's man, or even ask in the chat if you want us to define a word which we used we're always happy to go through the extra few seconds it takes to make sure you understand what the fuck we're saying so if there's any any problems whatsoever ask in chat ask on purses we're always happy to answer don't be shy so, we are an international show here so believe me 
even even between the panel people here, sometimes we have to ask questions. You know, what yeah. the fuck does cock smoke mean? You know? <laughs> <laughs> we don't mind, you know, ask us, man. Damn, we got a YouTube flag for that. Fuck. You know? <laughs> but we also have um, there's some listener questions which you should quickly get to. Uh, the listener mail. And um, one of the things is actually to do with that as well. Who, who was it who sent that one in? Let's have a look. Um, let me just quickly find who's a film. Yeah, Filmy Bowls sent in this one. This is the first one. I have two questions. Number one, a friend's girlfriend was talking. I believe she's from the UK. You should know that for sure, bro. <laughs> and use the slang splash bag. What is that? Man, I don't fucking know what splash bag is. <laughs> Splash, what splash, splash back or splash, splash bag. bag? B A G, splash bag. Uh, I can I can make up some things, but you know, you know it, it I, kind I of have, you know, I, I get some facts. imagery of you know yeah, ball yeah, bags, yeah, yeah. splash pretty, bag, pretty much. but then tea bag as well. It's like I don't know, yeah. man. Yeah, I'm 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 getting images I probably shouldn't. So yeah, I yeah. won't. I won't. <laughs> Only <laughs> our mind usually goes to that. I don't know why. Use but. your imagination, Phil. You probably get the same answers we do. You know? yeah. <laughs> and then uh, number two, off topic. If your knees bent the other way, what would a chair look like? Oh, I've thought about this one a little bit. Have you? You stoner, yeah. bro. Well, think about it. Yeah, well, think about it, though. <laughs> if your knees bent the other way, the chair would look the same, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think so. I think your your eyes didn't same, change. Right? Your knees changed. Yeah. <laughs> you just I sit backwards, didn't you? Just sit backwards like they used to well, do in yeah. all the cool, cool movies in the 90s. If you wanted to use the chair, you would basically just have to use it differently. You would have to kind of squat down and pull the chair in onto you. You wouldn't be able to sit straight down onto it. If you if your knees go the other way, mm -hmm. you know those chairs that they sort of, they don't have the front legs. They're like those ones that sort of roll back and they got the stands. Maybe look like those. That would be the more common chair so that your knees could go under the chair, if you know what I mean. Well, I was thinking if, if, if there was a slight hinging at, at the seat of the chair to where when you're sitting and as you touch the chair, it would go down, it would help you sit and stand up easier if your knees bent backwards. But I didn't want to get into that. If, if the question wasn't, how would you redesign a chair? He said, what would the chair look like? And the answer is, it would look the same. <laughs> yeah, it would look the same. That's the, mate, we could go on for like an hour discussing this yeah, topic. Talking yeah. about this. But I gave you the answer. It would look the same. It would look the same, all right? It would look the fucking because same. Because your knees bend don't make it look different. <laughs> Thanks, Phil. Thanks, Phil, for your uh, philosophical question. What's the word I'm looking for? Fucking hell. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Philosophical. Philosophical. And the answer no, to American one's no. question, how would you get in the chair? And my answer is any way you felt like it. That's right. Yeah. Forward. Yeah. You're getting forward, all right? Yeah. Fill me bowls. Thank you for your question. What else do we have here, mate? We have one, a long one, which was from Instagram a couple of weeks ago. So, and the username is what FKN username is available then? Obviously, somebody frustrated that he couldn't pick the name he wanted on Instagram, so we had to settle for that. But uh, hey, guys, love your podcast. Just a question for Bubba Hawk. Who's it? Uh, ah. I think that's you, Bubble Hawk. <laughs> sure. Uh, hello, Ozzy here, brother. Struggling to find a good, decent seed bank that guarantees delivery to or within Australia. Want a seed bank that doesn't leave a paper trail, i.e. good old-fashioned drop into a bank and deposit anonymously. I have found one that is in Australia, but has very limited products. Just wondering who you'd recommend for who to use. Obviously nervous about customs, paper trail, etc. Cheers. Love yeah. your work, guys. Thank you very much. What the fucking username is available to then. We appreciate that. that nice message you send there, bro. Yes. Thank you. So what are you I saying, would, Bob? I, you think? I would say that there's really not much in Australia. Uh, it's there, this has been quite a few that have been stung for it, uh, for, for sending stuff around. So you're going to, the ones that you have here are going to be fairly limited because again, getting stuff, there was a few that got stung because they were bringing stuff into the country uh, and they were getting like 5,000, 10,000 seeds sent through and they were just consistently getting uh, confiscated in customs. So I, I would say your best bet is to go with someone from an overseas bank that allows you to bank transfer and just go into the bank and get them to put it into uh, into, into an account that would be your best bet for if you're not trying to leave a paper trail but I mean at, at the same time have a safe address so if you're going to order from any even if you're ordering from the same state bear in mind if those people get busted they will the the 
the police will take all of their info, everyone they've sold to, everyone they've sent to, and so on and so forth. So overseas, it's very hard for them to get, for, for the police here to then ask them for that information because it's quite easy for an overseas bank to tell them to go fuck themselves because they have, you know, like you have no power here just do the Gandalf on them. So um, I, I would say and some Ali Bongos is a great one. I've had success with Ali Bongos uh, a few times. Uh, Weed Seed Express, I've had, uh, you know, I've used them a couple of times. I know a few people that have used um, the Vault and a couple of other ones as well. So it, it's, it just comes down. A lot of them have different ways. You can, you know, you can pay by cards, you can pay by Bitcoin, you can pay by, you know, uh, bank transfers. So, and Alibongo and uh, would probably be the easiest ones to chat to. They'll make sure that they can um, they can get it all sorted and sent to you without too much issue. So, uh, Dave Leo, fifteen. That's, That's the right. other side of it. You get discount yeah. to seeds. Alibongo is the shit, man. Alibongo is the shit. If you if you want seeds, bongs, lighters, tins, papers, fucking anything, then head to Alibongo, and you also get the fifteen percent discount when you use the code Percy's fifteen, all capitals. Okay, mm. but they're good guys, man, and the shipping is real good as well, isn't it? Yeah, got here, got here quick, fast. no issues, and it all came in breeder packs as well. So I managed to get and and I got a free T-shirt and a little monkey toy. Thing, Legends, so. <laughs> it was quite quite cool. Monkey toy, good guys, yes, man. I like good it. Guys. Monkey, it's like like a barrel of monkeys. So we it's... have a confusing question here, which is maybe beyond us. Oh. I'm afraid, Woody. Thanks for your question, bro. <laughs> I want to buy land in the metaverse to grow cannabis so I can part so I can party with Snoop Dogg and Martha fucking Stewart, you know? So I was wondering <laughs> if there's a good metaverse retailer or realtor that you that you'll use here at Percy's. Uh yeah, bro. That, that's Google. You need for Mackie, that one. <laughs> Mackie, aren't you a meta retailer? No, no, I, I, I'm not I involved you, in the in the metaverse just yet. Uh, you know, well, I was kind of wondering because I thought you would take Bit, Bitcoin, you know, for Meta, meta Land, you know. I, I don't own any Meta Land. I, I don't think, you know, it, you <laughs> know how much cash, I love this. Man, tell him got it. <laughs> just take the money, bro. <laughs> take the money. <laughs> you know, here's some digital shit. But I, I like the whole concept of it, but I don't think it'll uh, really go very far. It's good for a game, but as like, People going to the shops in the metaverse rather than in real life. I don't think it's going to work out that way. It's just too clunky. You know, the, the headsets are too big. But anyway, let's not go off on that tangent. Uh, <laughs> secondly, how do I water plants in the meta? <laughs> That's oh, what the cool kids water. call it. Okay. Is it just me? Thanks again for your help. You have to buy the meta water from Mark Zuckerberg. He provides it all to everybody. That's right. Yeah. And he probably wants a tax extra for that cannabis meta water so <laughs> you gotta you gotta, you gotta sign up for a streaming service mm -hmm. that's right you have mm -hmm. to get a license a meta license to grow your meta, meta cannabis <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah get yeah. randy get randy to supply your streaming service i see, I, I haven't even been on the metaverse yet i'm sure it's going to be interesting it's going to be fun but i don't think it's going to be as big as they expect it to be which is oh. just my opinion we also have a question from ma tommy i hope i'm pronouncing that name right it's on the forum often I don't know if it's Matami or Matami or what, uh, 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 but I'm trying. I'm trying. Okay. Uh, okay. You've terminology been you that for years, Mackie. You're trying. <laughs> I'll do my best. That, that's all I can do. Okay. Terminology and slang. I don't know if this fits, but I hope so. In grow, I grow in relative isolation, meaning most of my people are not weed experts and do not spend a lot of time sharing stories and flower with friends. Uh, that is a long backdrop to my question which is about naming smells. <laughs> no, it's all good. And anytime anybody wants to talk about weed, there's Percy's Grow Room, man. You can go over there. You can talk to all of us. This is what we do. We grow and smoke our own cannabis. So if you need to talk to somebody, yeah, that's the place to go to. We also have a Discord, a high and homegrown Discord. If you go to Percy's, I can drop you the link there so you can go and join the Discord. Or if you just contact me on highandhomegrown at gmail.com and ask for the Discord link, I'll happily send it over to you. So just let us know if you need it. Uh, I know what, uh, to carry on with the question, sorry. I know what I like in weed smell, but I can't figure out if that is earthy or diesel or dank or sweet. I have crops that I like the smell and some that I like less, but I do not know how to describe it to anyone. Uh, how can I connect the dots between smell, uh, sweet smelling weed in a review or website or something that 
uh, something to the actual smell. So yeah, you're going to be talking about the terpenes there. You know uh, what kind mm. of it's difficult to describe. I mean, earthy smell. Go go and smell soil, then you'll get the kind of vibe. I mean, it's not exactly that, but you can smell that earthy kind of smell to it mm -hmm. when you uh, when you smoke the weed. And and diesel it's chemically it smells like the buds have been dipped in in an, like a diesel. It's exactly what it is. Yeah. yeah, if you get a real quality smell diesel one, I, I mean, I've recently pulled some skunk that. I mean, it smelled exactly like you think diesel mm -hmm. there was no question it smells like it smells like fuel you pump in your vehicle yeah yeah, yeah it's been smuggled it's pretty, in yeah. in a diesel tank you know <laughs> that's pretty much that. yeah no yeah. but i mean yeah, fuel, oh, you can also yeah diesel that would be diesel but you can also be fuely I mean, it may be able to have a little gassy smell to it or a little kerosene -y smell to it Those like are fire cool. lighters from the barbecue anything like that you know anything chemically anything yeah. fuely kind of mm -hmm. a smell yeah that, that that's what they're referring to there yeah you mm. know and then sweet uh i kind of equate that in my my the smell of cotton candy of course or, or as you would call it fairy floss is sweet that's one of them but also uh sweet smelling flowers petunias and, and you know very highly fragrant sweet smell yeah. flowers is what fruity, i equate in cannabis. fucking sweet man and oh now fruity's oof. different yeah fruity you're going to get into the into the lemons and the oranges mm -hmm. and the berries mm -hmm. and those kind of uh, smells that you're talking about uh, mm -hmm. most cannabis plants that you're going to smell especially when they're fresh are going to be just a mishmash of all of this yeah. yeah and what you have to do is just close your eyes break open one of those buds and smell it and then just see what you think and it will, it will remind you of something. Mm. Now, the question that I saw on Percy's that I read part of it that was interesting is, is describe what dank is. That's a rough yeah. one, but I, you Thick, know, pungent, like you can't mistake it. It's in the air. It's, it's the smell yeah. of cannabis. When you walk by and you smell this certain pungent odor that catches your but nose. It, I don't think it's just like, cannabis. Oh, it's, it's flowers in general. Cause you know, I think they're like orchids. No, the, the, yeah. the really smelly ones. And if you let the pollen land on something, it will stain them. I think they're orchids, right? Uh, I'm not sure of that myself. Yeah, well, uh, the missus would know. Mrs. M would know what flowers I'm talking about. They smell really strong. But mm -hmm. they, they give off a pungent smell as well. You know, at certain times, just that cannabis mm -hmm. is very pungent. But there's other plants that... It's, it's like thick humidity in the air. You know, it's mm -hmm. like the air is thicker because of how strong this smell is. That's what pungency mm -hmm. is to me. Yeah, there's one one strain that my, my uh, missus really, really loves. And when she sparks it in a house, I mean, that's what I call dank. Because when I walk in the door, I don't even take but half a smell and half a breath. And I know it, somewhere in the house that's been mm -hmm. sparked. Suddenly yeah. you're swimming through the terpenes. You it's know? like, ooh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know exactly what that was. some good shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dank is the, uh, the term for high quality necessarily because the dank is what gives off the good smell and the good taste, yeah. the, you know, that, that thickness, yeah. man. And B. Mooney had a, had a point that, that, I, that I kind of equate to it as well is dankness. I kind of get that mercine smell, that that musty, musky mm -hmm. mercine mm -hmm. smell is what I equate a lot with the cannabis mm -hmm. with dank. And I think we have one more question which we should get to. Is it there? Yeah, here it is. Uh, that's, uh, oh, no, that was it. That was it about the smell. That was the last one there. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I reckon a skunk, like a nice, a nice heavy skunk. That's you know, mm -hmm. you know that that's going to be like the epitome of dank. When you you walk in, you open the tent, you just smacked in the face by it. Like that's mm -hmm. yeah, you know. Or as you said, you spark up and the foot, you walk through the door and you can smell it. The, as soon as you smell it, you know exactly what it is. That's yeah. you know, there's no mistaking that smell. But yeah, pungent, thick, and high quality is another one. Yeah, I think Super Cropper was saying is a term yeah. for high quality yeah people use it for that as well yeah, dave said here yeah. dank actually means wet and smelly yeah you can you know it's like the, the humidity changes in the room the air is thicker because that smell has filled it that lemon tree a eh? you know what i'm saying stone wolf dank yeah. bro dank B banana banana farmer <laughs> the triple bag days dank yeah when you need more than one bag mm -hmm. to cover that smell <laughs> mm -hmm. that's well. That's dank. Any home grows at doing that. I mean, hell, you, you, you're not stopping the smell with a lunch bag on good home grow. 
And there's Billy getting there's more flags there. there. No Billy, bad Billy. Oh, I was, I was going to say. <laughs> oh, no. Don't, don't read it out. No, no. It's great. I'm not going to read it. I'm just saying it's good to see the chat getting back to their <laughs> filthy ways. You know, you're terrible. Terrible. Come on, you gave, him a, you gave him a wrench. Do we have to block Billy for that? You know what? Yeah. <laughs> Let's take that wrench for him. He's talking about oh, vabbing, Lord. you know. Oh Lord! <laughs> oh no! No, let's not get onto the vabs. <laughs> Savage. <laughs> well, I think that's all we have time for here. That's all the listener questions, and that's a shitload of definitions. But there's always more. And if you need any help with any definitions, you can even send us a PM. You know, if you're too embarrassed for some reason to be like, "Yeah, I have this question, and I think it's a stupid question," so I don't want to post there it. There's no please. stupid question. Okay, exactly, man. There's no stupid question of Percy's. Nobody's ever going to mm-hmm. say shit to you just for asking a novice question. We've all been there. Ask any question you like. Oh, be, you wouldn't believe shy. the questions we've been asked over there, and we answer them anyway. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We've all been there, man. Don't be shy. But you can always uh, also uh, PM any of the the panel members here: Bubba Hop, me, mm-hmm. Monkey, Marge when she's around. You know. Uh, because Marge, is, she's got some problems at home, but she's going to be back next week, hopefully. Hopefully. Yay. You know, she's all Marge. good. I, I spoke to her today, and she said hi. She wanted me to tell you all that she said hi, and she wished she could be here, but she'll be back soon. Uh, hopefully next week. Hopefully next week. Uh, but, but that's it, man. If you need any help at all, whatever it is, head over to percyscoring.com, and we'll be there to help you out anytime, man. So sign up, become a member, and you will enjoy it, no doubt. But I think that's everything. Is there anything else to add here? Sounds like a no. Let's go to the outro. And there we go, everybody. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. If you have any questions regarding terminology or slang, then you can head over to Percy's Grow Room and we'll be able to answer any questions you have over there. Also, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask so we can read them out on the show, then you can email us at highonhomegrown at gmail.com. Or again, you can find us over on percysgrowroom.com. You can message Monkey, myself, or Bubba Hawk over there. You can also find us on social networks, Instagram or Twitter. Instagram is going to be the best one. If you want Instagram, just search for High on Homegrown. You'll find us and you can send us messages there with any questions you might have as well. And we're always happy to read them out on the show. If you want to get in touch with us, then please do so. It's always good to hear from the listeners. So we massively appreciate you listening to the show. Massively appreciate you downloading it. And it would be epic if you could share the show with one of your friends who also might enjoy the show. If you are a Patreon, then tonight, which is Friday the 19th of August, we're going to have a Patreon session over on in the Zoom room. If you are a Patreon and you'd like to be involved in that, then send us an email and I'll be able to send you the link to the Zoom room. And that starts at nine o'clock UK time. If you're around, it'll be great to see you over there. But for now, that's it for this week. We'll catch you on Sunday for the live show over on youtube.com slash high on homegrown at the same time, same place. We'll see you then. Have a good weekend, everybody. Stay high. Goodbye.